Good afternoon. George Cavaligos for Naked Trader from the floor of the CME Group. A little something for everybody today, guys. We caught some of the downside. It wasn't quite quick enough to cover everything at the lows, but we covered some. Move stops down. The support and resistance numbers that I give, I will always be covering against support levels if I'm short, and I'll always be getting out of longs against resistance levels if I'm long. Just an example, say, you know, last night I sent out the email, try the short, looked like the market was getting hit with some pretty good size selling late yesterday, looked like a great, you know, potential for some selling to follow through into either this morning or possibly even last night. Say we put a five lot on, we sold five Dece tenures at 129, whatever you had between like 06 and 11 I think I put up 09 and 14 pick say 09 say we sold 09s market was trading around in there this morning it was kind of a tough spot because you didn't have a good stop level but you know you have to risk things so you put a stop up above 25 or 27 just to protect yourself from a disaster market traded down it traded back to the 128 27 level I covered two so I'm still short three. Then it traded down on the number to what, uh, 128, uh, 19, I think. The way it got hit on the number, you always wanna, when the markets trade like that on numbers, unless it's an earth shattering type thing, if it's a non-farm number, even then you'll try to fade those. You wanna cover. It got down to 19, I think I had 15 to 17 as that big support level. If you looked at the hourly chart, you could see the trend line was there. I covered two more. Had a short of one still. Moved the stop down to break even. And in this case, actually, with the market going lower like that, you could even lower it a little bit more to, say, unchanged on the day, which I think was, uh, I don't even remember where the market closed, but let's say I moved it down to break even, 129.09. Mark came back, stopped me out. It got above you know unchanged on the day and was trading fairly positively the rest of the afternoon traded actually all the way up to the resistance trend line and it stopped there I think we've been in this little triangle long enough now I'm probably gonna whipsaw out of it one way or the other tomorrow on the number maybe even tonight as people are still squaring up I think there's a little bit more of a short base after that big sell-off this morning you know and the way the market snapped back that usually tells me there's some shorts trapped in the market. Some people call those uh, bear traps. A real bear trap in my world is where the market would have broke that trend line, really forced some st some shorts into the market, and then reversed and came back above the trend line. But you know the same type of uh, activity is involved, where the market you know makes a big move in one direction and then immediately snaps back and traps people in those positions down there below the market. Either way. I'm flat. We're going into the unemployment number tomorrow morning. I think the market's probably going to go higher. I almost think we should go back and retest the highs or get up pretty close to the highs. You know, it's kind of a big range trade, which is my favorite scenario that we're in this big range. I think if you look at the big parameters on the uh, DEES contract, it's going to be like 127 and a half, 128 and a half on the downside, 130. 22 to 131 20 the old highs on the subcontract there's often a tendency for the market to return to the previous contracts ranges i'm not sure why that happens but it does happen occasionally and it's something we could see so we'll trade those big ranges we'll try to catch as much in the middle as we can and we'll see what happens tomorrow i think you have to wait for the extremes tomorrow i think if we trade up towards those highs and it stops and it starts to reverse you could try a small short if we trade down towards the recent lows i don't think i want to jump and get long in front of those recent lows because i think there might be some more stops below that lower trend line like i think there's stops above the higher trend line the crazy world of the markets one of my buddies over in the s p says no stop goes untouched so say the market whipsaw is higher we take the stops out above uh, 129 26 27 and then we turn around and go down and take the stops out below 128 15 who knows that that wouldn't surprise me to see something like that try to look for the hourly reversals 
that's the plan for tomorrow. Uh, what else going on, guys? Uh, the equity trade that we've been sort of highlighting the last couple weeks. The Nasdaq got up some important levels. I got out of half of my long positions and I've moved my stops up on my remaining longs in the Nasdaq. It's trading down a little bit today. The volume seems kind of light. I'll wait and see what the uh, number brings tomorrow. If we get a solid reversal, it looks like we're going to put up a minor reversal on the Nasdaq and on the S&P today. We did make higher highs by a little bit this morning. And I think the S&P actually has a double top up around 1230. I'd love to see the S&P trade up to 1241, drag everything else up with it real quick. That, that would be the C equals A objective on the S&P. Um, at that point, I'm going to exit all my longs, and I'm going to start looking for some uh, bear trades on the equity side there. A um, bunch of reverse ETFs, one time short, two time shorts. We'll see, if, depending on the severity of any kind of reversal there. Gold, eh. Down three dollars, very quiet, not a lot going on there. Flat the gold. I think it needs to correct a little more. This B wave might not be over yet in the gold. If you remember the chart I sent out, where the A wave down, I think we're in a B wave going higher. It might be almost over. That might have some more upside here. And then I'm gonna look for reversals on gold. I might try a small short, looking for a move back down to those lows from uh, last month. That uh, what was it, 1705 maybe even. So that's it. Um, good luck tomorrow with the unemployment number. Guys, thanks. I got a couple emails today from some of you guys, you know, com complimenting me on uh, what I'm trying to do here and also looking for more information. You know, I'm trying to uh, take care of my own customers. That's my number one job, guys. I'm a futures broker and I'm doing that as my first job. And I notice a lot, actually, I think uh, Bill Bevins asked me some questions the other day and I went back and I realized that I wasn't being clear on some of the trade recommendations and some of the emails that I send out to the website. I try to be as clear as I can. Um, I'm so used to having my customers that have known me for so long that they practically can read between the lines of my commentary at times that I realize that a lot of you guys haven't dealt with me for a long time and you can't read between the lines. I'm going to try and be more specific. I've tried that over the last couple of days. Um, remember the emails come out in the morning. I'll throw out special emails intraday and I do this broadcast in the afternoon. Now I'm, I'm sometimes changing ideas between the email and the broadcast because the markets change. Um, one of my least favorite economists, Keynes, Keynes once said, uh, the market changed, I changed or something along those lines and that's what all traders have to do is remain flexible and don't get dogmatic and don't get stuck into a position that's it guys have a great night